Now I'm very happy to welcome uh, Meredith Ibe, who is the spokeswoman for the Baby Safe Haven program. Meredith, welcome. Hi. <laughs> thank you so very, very much for volunteering uh, to do this. Oh, no, thank you for having me. Wow. <laughs> Could you give us a little bit of a background? Maybe this would be a good way mm -hmm. to start. On, yeah on your background and, and where you're from and what you're doing now and how you got involved in being selected to be the spokeswoman yeah. for this very, very important program. Absolutely, absolutely. My name is Meredith Ive, like you said. I am a rising senior at the Catholic University of America's Benjamin T. Rome School of Music in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm a musical theater major there, and I also am doing an interdisciplinary track for education. So I'm really interested in music education, theater, music, um, performing in both the New Hampshire and D.C. area. Uh, I'm also involved in a lot of service projects down in D.C. I do a lot of work with the Best Buddies organization and Little Sisters of the Poor and Beacon House, which is an after-school tutoring program in D.C. as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm originally from New Hampshire. I graduated from St. Thomas Aquinas High School over in Dover okay. in 2013. Okay. <laughs> so I last year I sang for a Knights of Columbus event and the state deputy Wayne Griffin was there and he heard me singing he liked my performance I guess and he mentioned to me this baby safe haven law and yes. that they were looking for a spokeswoman so I thought it would be a really amazing opportunity to get to represent a, such a a wonderful and fairly unknown law in the state of New Hampshire. I didn't really know anything about it before right. yeah. uh, Wayne talking to me. So I'm really honored to have been chosen and I'm glad to be able to do things like this in New Hampshire and talk about it on a broader scale. You know what? I think Wayne Griffin made a great selection. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I could tell you're a, perf you're a perfect fit for being this, being this <laughs> spokeswoman. You know, as you know, we just finished a conversation with uh, Phyllis Woods, who was mm -hmm. the prime sponsor on the bill uh, back, in, back in 2003. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you could give us a little bit of a, a snapshot of what the program is all about itself and how to implement it and yeah. you know, kind of get into the details of the program. Yeah, absolutely. So the program is all about a woman in New Hampshire knowing that she has the option of safely abandoning her baby if she finds herself in crisis within seven days of okay. the baby being born. So, like I said, within seven days of a woman That's having, an important point. Yes, yeah. yeah, seven days. It has to be within that week. Um, if a woman finds herself struggling or in crisis or feels the need to abandon her baby, she right. can go to any safe haven location, which is any hospital, fire station, police station, or anywhere that has been designated a safe haven location, and she can safely abandon her baby by giving it to a first responder at that location. And that's really a key point, as yes. I understand, is the actual physical... Yes, she has to physically hand, hand the baby to a, a responder. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So right. that the baby can then be medically checked out, make sure that everything's okay, um, and then before being held or handed over to the human resources. And, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, have there been any cases in New Hampshire of such a turnover where, you know, babies have, have, have been saved. Can you share with the audience any stories or anecdotes? Yeah, we are, may... yes, we are aware of, I believe it's three safe abandonments since the law was passed, the okay. most recent of which being at Portsmouth Hospital. So the law has been utilized in the state of New Hampshire, which we're really, really happy to see. And as far as I'm aware, we have not had any unsafe, unsafe. abandonments as well. Okay. So it's important that women know, though, about the law so that if they know someone who's in crisis or if they find themselves in crisis, they can utilize this law, which is there sh specifically for them. Well, that's really what we're trying to do here today is yeah. to create awareness. Exactly. So that you know, p people, women, yeah. uh, become aware of this and, and understand that this could be an option, as you say, should they be in a Absolutely. Should they be in a crisis yeah, and the kind, Knights kind, of, kind of situation? Yes, and the Knights of Columbus have taken on this, uh, this role of promoting or supporting the law in the state right. of New Hampshire. And by doing that, they've designated a spokeswoman, which is okay. me. Right. And they've also ordered or been in charge of ordering the signs for the safe haven locations. Let's go back to the, to the sign a minute, yeah. uh, a minute here, uh, Meredith. Uh, the understanding is, is that the, the signs are obtained through the local the local uh, mm -hmm. Knights of Columbus Council. Yeah. They're the ones who have got the ability and the responsibility 
to procure the signs to p and, and, and to pay for the signs. Yeah, that is correct. The right. Knights are providing a service by buying the signs. Yes. So to be put on the safe haven yeah, locations. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about maybe some of the things that you have planned or are in your mind as uh, you, you know, go ahead with your duties as a spokeswoman. What are you thinking about doing to help promote further, you know, the Baby Safe Haven program? Yeah, well, the purpose of having a, a younger woman <laughs> such as myself be the spokeswoman is that our, our target, really, our target audience in reaching is women my age. Yes. Um, statistically around the country, most abandonments happen with women who are 14 to 17 and then right after college. So my age, like 21 through 24. Okay. So having a young woman speak about this law gives other women in the state the chance to know that somebody their age is representing them, somebody with their experience perhaps right, is right, representing them, right. um, so that I can be closer to the women that we're trying to reach within the state. So I hope to do that by working very closely with the Knights. I'm okay. very grateful for their support and doing radio interviews around the state, uh, interviews like this so that people just, so that they know about the law here in New Hampshire. I don't want young women to be unfamiliar with Baby Safe Haven. I want them to know that it's an option for both themselves and their friends if they so need it. Okay, so if anyone, if anyone watching is interested in having you uh, come on their program, mm -hmm. on their radio program or TV program, you're, you're ready to go. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but what's the what's the way to how do we contact you know Meredith? How what uh, advice would you would you want to give somebody to, to in order to contact you to do that? So I would say to go through the Knights of Columbus. Okay. Um, yeah, they are most in charge of of supporting the law in this state right now and um, bringing it to the forefront. So I would go through the Knights of Columbus in order to have me at a radio or a TV appearance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you done any other uh, promotional activities to date? Yeah, well, I'm really grateful to say that I was actually a part of the Miss America organization for two years. Okay. I was Miss Gate City here in New Hampshire. Oh, good so, for you. Yeah, back in okay. 2013, so a few years ago now, but I was Miss Gate City, so it's nice to be back near Nashua. <laughs> All right, now um, i got to stop you there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I've lived in New Hampshire a long time, but I haven't heard, who, where, who's Gate City? Which city Gate is City that? is Nashua. Ah, okay, yeah. that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, so All I right. was able to compete on the Miss New Hampshire stage, which was really exciting. Okay. I won non-finalist talent there and I also competed in um, Miss New Hampshire's Outstanding Teen the year okay. prior where I was in the top right. five and won okay. talent. Right. Yeah, so I've done a lot of work for the Miss America organization. In turn, I've done a lot with promoting arts education okay. um, throughout both New Hampshire and DC. And at the moment, I've done a lot of music directing down in DC. So I've worked with area high schools and at my own college to music direct and okay. be a part of kind of spreading arts education. Well, you're, you're absolutely a great fit, <laughs> a great fit for this responsibility. Thank you. Uh, I am personally aware mm -hmm. of some Knights Councils that have already reached out, yeah. you know, to their local first responders mm -hmm. and have uh, procured signs. Well, first they've gone to that first responder facility, uh, the police station, the fire station, mm -hmm. gotten approval, then, then ordered the sign. And so we're, we're underway. Yeah. You know, we really, we really are underway. Absolutely. The Knights are really excited, uh, excited about this program. And yeah, very, and I am quite, too. You know, quite, uh, quite happy to be sponsoring it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and it's wonderful. And I, I think that the New Hampshire law is unique in the sense that the woman does have to hand the baby to a live person and that live person can then make sure that the woman in crisis is all right as well you know if you're handing the abandonment or if you're handing the baby over yes. to a live person then potentially that woman who's in crisis could get the help that they need in that moment as well you just i mean you just touched on something mm -hmm. i think vitally important yeah. that it's not just the baby oh yeah no it's not just the baby so yeah. it's it, it's the mother who is also mm -hmm. going to it gets it gets some attention here. Yeah, the woman does have the option to yes. be completely anonymous, right. but I think that, that is optional, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think right. that person-to-person -person contact gives that woman a really valuable resource to potentially get the help that they need in that moment as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, this absolutely sounds like a like a <laughs> terrific program. Yes. You know, something absolutely absolutely the right thing to do for this for the state of the state of New Hampshire. I think so as well. Yeah. 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 In conclusion, do you have any other comments or recommendations or suggestions that you'd like to leave with our audience? 
Well, it's important that women remember that if they do find themselves in crisis or if they know someone who is in crisis, the hotline for Baby Safe Haven is 1-888-510-BABY. What, so, could you say that one more time, absolutely. please? Absolutely. 1-888-510-BABY. And okay. then, yeah, and then they can also call 911 and agree to meet a first responder at any okay. location. Yeah. All right, boy, I'm yep. glad we got that in mm -hmm. there. All right, yeah. very, very good. <laughs> Meredith, you're going to be a tremendous asset. Oh, thank you. you. Know, <laughs> a tremendous asset, particularly to the young women out there. Yes. To those in need. Oh, I would you know? hope so. I'm grateful. Oh, yeah, I'm grateful gosh. to be able to right. represent them in right. this way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> great job. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, God thank bless you, so you and keep me. up the great work. Oh, thank okay, you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome.